one piece of paper over there and we need it to be covered in lots of stuff. So it said in the middle, thanking God. And I wonder if you could go across at some point in the next seven minutes and put or draw or write on that big piece of paper over next to Peter something that you might be thanking God for today. That'd be really good. And uh, there's a card on the table next to it, which is for Terry, because she's moved to Altrincham and it'd be good to send her a new home card. Uh, so please do sign that as well. So the big long table, things we're thanking God for today. The smaller table, a, a new home card for Terry. And just to keep you going as well, um, think about your favorite film and why it's your favourite film. Do get writing. Now, if you're joining us online at home, you could put in the chat box um, things that you're thanking God for today. You could also put in the chat um, what, uh, what your favourite film is and why it's your favourite film. And also, if you are joining us online, you might want to go to our website, tanfieldchurch.org.uk, go to Sunday services and pick today's date or today's subject, which is Deuteronomy chapter 9, because there is a sheet there that you might want to download and print because we'll be using it later on. So do download that from there. Here in the hall, lots of people are now writing to uh, put on the big sheet the things they're thanking God for today, or some of them. I'm sure we won't get all of them on there. And I hope they're also signing the card. going every time I walk beyond here. So if you could turn it down a bit, that would be good. Thank you. So if you're just joining us online, uh, do let us know things that you're thanking God for. Yeah, that's better, Mike. Thank you. Um, things you're thanking God for, or maybe your favourite film, and why it's your favourite film. Kate, I'm not sure the camera's quite pointing in the right place, but I'm sure you can adjust that when we get to it and then when you've written if you're here in the hall and you've written stuff on our thanking God sheet or and also signed the card do have a think about what your favorite film is and why it's your favorite film That's a very good way of reserving a seat, isn't it? <laughs> so if you're just joining us online, do put in the comments box what you're thanking God for today. And also maybe what your favourite film is and why. Both of those things will come up later in the service. People here who are here in the hall are writing on a big sheet of paper some of the things they're thanking God for today. And they're hopefully also writing in a card. And they might even be thinking about what their favourite film is as well. If you're online, we won't pick up on your comments just now. We'll pick up on them a bit later. But do get typing in there to tell us what you're thanking God for today and uh, what your favourite film is and why. What's so good about your favourite film? Good morning and welcome those of you who are joining us in the hall who are just arriving. Just to let you know, we're writing on a big sheet of paper over there things that we're thanking God for today. So uh, do get over there, pick up a pen, get scribbling, drawing, writing, whatever. Things that you're thanking God for today on the long blue table. There's also a card to sign for Terry who has uh, moved to Altrincham, so we want to send her a, a new home card. So do get writing on the big sheet of paper on the long table things you're thanking God for. You might also want to think about what your favourite film is and why, because all these things will be coming up later. 
Carol's shaking her head at me. I'm not sure why. But I know nobody's listening, Carol, but I'll carry on anyway. I'm used to that. <laughs> so favourite films... And why are they your favourite films? And there's a big sheet of paper to write things you're thanking God for over there on the long table. That will come up later on. We'll be using that in the service. There's also a card to sign for Terry. So do put your paw print, or preferably a signature, on the card. That'd be fantastic. Hello and welcome to those of you just arriving. Do go over to our table, a long table over there, and write things that, or draw things that we're thanking God for today. That will all come up later. Also a card to sign. And have a think about what your favourite film is and why it's your favourite film. If you're joining us online, um, do type in the comments box things you're thanking God for today, also your favourite film. You might also, if you're online, want to go to our website, townfieldchurch.org.uk, go to Sunday services and pick today's service, which is the title is Deuteronomy chapter 9, I think verses 1 to 6. Uh, there's a sheet there that you might want to download and print. We'll be using that later on. Download, print, and you might need a pair of scissors as well. So those of you just arriving in the hall, there's a big table over there with things we're thanking God for. Do go and write, draw, scribble, whatever you're thanking God for today. That'll be coming up later in the service. There's also a card to sign uh, for Terry. And also have a think about what your favourite film is and why is it your favourite film? Well, good morning everybody. Welcome and thank you for braving the weather if you are here with us in the hall. I know it's a bit blustery today and a bit wet. If you're joining us online because you're not braving the weather, that's fine. Still great to have you with us. Now, we have been thinking and drawing and writing about some of the things that we're thanking God for at the moment. And now Carol's maybe going to wish she's not standing there at the moment because now we need to bring that big piece of paper up here. So I wonder if we've got anybody who might like to maybe help Carol bring that big piece of paper up here, the big piece of paper that you've been writing about all the things you've thanking God for on. Now remember if you bring it to the front we're live streaming so if you're okay with that do join me up here. If you'd rather not be on the camera that's fine. So as that, that comes up you may have been uh, typing in the comments box things you're thanking God for. Have we had any uh, things? That, great so we'll come to those in a minute. So here's a big sheet of paper with some of the things we're thanking God for today. This is going to test our upside down reading I can see. Right so let's have that up here and see if we can see what that tells us. So let's hold it up so that we can have a chance of seeing it online. So, we've got riding my bike, we've got chocolate, we've got for life, good food, Pokemon, so lots of things that we enjoy doing. Noodles, who is it that likes noodles? Great, Peter likes noodles, brilliant. Um, so that's some people we're thanking God for, that's great. Uh, pizza, Nando's, there's a lot of food here, isn't there? Uh, my family, my hamster, <laughs> hello, my dog, more Pokemon, uh, very popular. Living without fear, that's a good one. Keeping me safe, gaming, family, meeting new people and students. Mm, that looks like a mountain, does that say Triffin Life? Anyone want to fill me in? Yeah, life, Triffin and life. Triffin and life. So Triffin's a mountain yeah. and life is life. Yeah, we know what that is. Good. Um, family and friends for something about when I fell off my bike. No cars, when fell off my bike. no cars coming when he fell off his bike. That is a good thing to thank God for. And friends, family, flowers, puppies, good food and books. All good things. Now, what have we got online, Kate? What have we also had mentioned?
Janet would like to thank God that her COVID test is negative. Excellent. Hooray. That's a good thing to thank God for. Um, Hazel would like to thank God for friends. And Sue would like to thank God for each day. And of course, chocolate. Excellent. Good. Loads of things to thank God for there. Now, there's lots of things and lots of things God does for us. Maybe we would also want to add to that something about who God is, God's character a bit. Maybe we also want to thank God for being our creator, for being powerful, faithful, loving, being kind, being true, being fair, being right. Lots of things to thank God for today. So thank you for bringing our thanking God sheet out. If you'd like to take that back over there, let's thank God together um, in a song. Thanking God for those things and other things that the song mentions. And the song says that God's love endures or God's love goes on forever. So let's thank God for all the things God does for us but also for who God is and what God is like. Do stand to sing if you would like to. Give thanks to the Lord our God and King His love endures forever For He's good, He's above all things His love endures forever Sing praise, sing praise With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm His love endures forever For the life that's been reborn His love endures forever Give praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. to the setting sun his love endures forever by the grace of god we will carry on his love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise forever god is faithful strong forever God is with us forever forever God is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever forever and we pray together Lord we thank you for all of those things that we are thanking you for this morning. We recognize there's lots of people and things that we want to thank you for, for keeping us safe, for providing for us, for giving us things to enjoy. We thank you also for who you are, that faithful, loving God who never leaves us. Lord, we remember this morning as we join together that God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Amen. Please do take a seat. Great. Now, there is one book in the Bible which is a little bit like a pep talk before a big sports match. It's a little bit like a school assembly at the beginning of term, or maybe it's a little bit like a, a big motivational speech from your boss at work just before a new big project. And that is the book of Deuteronomy. It's the whole book is a speech from Moses as he's getting everybody ready for the big move. The big move of moving into new houses in a new country. Now, does anybody remember moving house at any point? Yeah, children and young people, do any of you remember moving house? What do you remember from moving house? What was it like moving house? Anybody, any children and young people remember anything? Linda? Yeah, it was really dusty and we had sandwiches on the couch instead of on the bed. 
it was really dusty and you had sandwiches on the ca couch instead of the table. instead of the table okay great excellence Joel it was a very long drive it was a very long drive one of our moves was yes yeah Michael you forgot your toothbrush. Did you have a whole day without brushing your teeth? <laughs> Celebrations. <laughs> okay, Edward, had, what do you remember about moving house? Had to sleep on the floor. Yeah, it's all a bit weird, isn't it, when you move house? I remember it being really tiring. In fact, one of our many moves we did ourselves. That was a bad idea. I have never ached as much as I did the next day after moving house ourselves. Any adults remember moving house? Anything you remember from moving house you want to tell us about? Yeah, Nabil? We had five boxes, but five years later we haven't opened. You've got five boxes that five years later you've not opened. May I suggest you don't need those things? Yeah, anything else anybody wants to remember? Yes, Sarah? Not knowing where anything is. Not not knowing where anything is, yeah, it's just, it's quite disruptive, isn't it? It can be quite stressy, but maybe it's a little bit exciting as well. Maybe there's something exciting about moving house. Well, this thing that Moses is talking about isn't just about moving house. It's about a whole country full of people moving house at the same time. And it's about a whole country full of people moving into a whole new country to live in. So let's find out a little bit more about that. And we need some help. Somewhere in this hall, there is a balloon hidden. And I need some children and young people to find that balloon. And when they found it, I need you to pop it and bring to the front what is in the balloon. You don't need to go through any doors to find the balloon. Have a good look around. I hid it fairly well. It's a red balloon, if that helps. Have a good look. Nobody's even remotely warm yet. Do get looking. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Nobody's got close yet. Keep looking. We found it, excellent. Come on, bring it over here then. If you're happy to be on the camera, bring it over here and pop it. Can you pop the balloon? I can. Who would like to pop it? Very good. Now, if you'd like to pick up the piece of paper that's come out, excellent. So that has, tells us something that Moses said when they were about to do this big moving house thing. Would any of you like to read that out? Yeah. No. <laughs> go on, Joel, you know you want to. I'm not really twisting your arm, but there you go. So let's have a listen. This is what Moses said just as they were about to move house. Israel, listen to me. You will soon cross the Jordan River and go into the land to force out the nations that live there. They're, they are more powerful than you are, and the walls around their cities reach to the sky. Brilliant, thank you. Go and grab your seat. There's going to be some more things to find in a minute. Some of them might involve chocolate, maybe. We shall see. Uh, so that sounds to me like that's quite a big deal, actually, isn't it? Did you list, hear that bit they said? You're going to this new land. The people who live there already, they are more powerful than you, and their walls around their cities reach to the sky. If you've been to Chester, walk around the walls. You know, if you wanted to get into Chester without being invited in over those walls, that'd be quite hard, wouldn't it? Well, these walls, they say, go right to the sky. Not literally, but they look really, really tall. That sounds like quite a big deal. It sounds like they're being asked to do something that might be too big for them, even though it's the thing they've been working towards for years and years and years. Maybe it felt a little bit like the night before the start of a new school year, or the night before a new job, or the night before moving house. A mixture of excitement and also being a little bit nervous. But that's not all Moses said. So let's see something else Moses said. There's another hidden thing. It's in a welly this time. So go around and look, see if you can find a welly. And find what's in the welly. Sounds like a TV programme, doesn't it? What's in the welly? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> if you're old enough, it's the sort of thing Chris Evans used to do. What's in the welly? We've not even found the welly yet. Keep looking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we found a welly. We found a welly. Here comes the welly. Maybe comes the welly. Yeah, bring the welly. Bring the welly as well. Otherwise, my welly will get left in the uh, lost property, which would be a bad idea next time I need it. Brilliant. Thank you. Now, would anybody like to read what we've just found in the welly? No, I'm not going to force anyone, unless it's Joel. Anyone else want to read what's in the welly? No, come on then, Joel, you know you want to. Thank you. You did want to, didn't you? Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, sure, he says. Right, there you go. The Lord your God has promised to go ahead of you. 
Excellent. So, grab a seat, all of you. Thank you very much. There'll be more to find in a minute. There wasn't chocolate in that one. There might be in another one. So, uh, yeah, this big thing they've been asked to do, but they've discovered that um, Moses is saying, God has, will go ahead of you. They've discovered over and over again, haven't they, on their long journey with God so far, that even if they felt worried, God wasn't just with them. But God was going ahead of them. God was preparing the way for them. God was getting stuff ready for them before they got there. They might have had all sorts of things to worry about, but they could be sure that even if there were, were worrying things, God was with them and God was going ahead of them to get things ready. And I'm sure that lots of us have found that in the past that has been true. Has anybody found that? that there's been something we've had to go into, which has been worrying, maybe a bit scary, but when we look back, we realise that God was with us and God had actually gone ahead of us and started to get things ready for us. So let's just have a little thinky moment. Now, I'm not asking you to tell me or anyone else about this, but just have a little thinky moment. Have we ever had a situation where we've had been heading towards something that's felt a bit, a bit too big for us, but actually looking back, even though we were worried about it, we can see that God was with us and that God had gone ahead of us and prepared the way for us. And when we've thought about that and whether that's ever happened to us in the past, maybe it's good also to ask ourselves if there's anything that makes us feel a little bit like the Israelites, these people we're talking about now. Is there anything we're at the start of that feels new or different and feels a bit too big for us. And if we do feel like we're in a situation like that, could we now very quietly hand those things to God and ask God to help us find his way ahead through those things? Because God is reliable. That's what Moses was saying. God is trustworthy, God is faithful, God is unchanging. God is like a rock, like an anchor that holds us steady even in the middle of massive storms. Let's sing to remember that now together. <laughs>
please do take a seat. Now, we got you thinking earlier about what your favourite film might be and why. And I think you were so busy writing on the sheet over there, which was great, that I'm not sure you had an awful lot of time to talk about what your favourite film is. So did anybody have a chance to think about your favourite film and why it's your favourite film? I wonder if any children would like to tell us first, and we'll come to the adults. We do want to hear from you too. Any children want to tell us what their favourite film is? Joel? Um, how to Train Your Dragon, because it's quite feel good. And how to check, train your jag dragon, I can't get my words out. How to train your dragon because it's feel good. Yeah, okay, great. Michael? Night in the Museum. Say that again. Night in the Museum. And why, I don't think I've ever seen it, but I've seen about it. So what's good about that film? Why do you like it? Because um, I like Dexter. Because you like? Dexter. Dexter. Okay, there's a character in it. Great, excellent. Any other favourite films from any of our children? Yeah, Nancy? Encanto, that's quite a new one, isn't it? What do you like about Encanto? Can't quite hear. The songs. In fact, I think it's still number one, isn't it? Let's talk about Bruno, is that right? Yeah. Have I got that vaguely right? Yeah, okay. Great, so adults, what were some of your favourite films? Yes, Ruth? Life is Beautiful. Life is Beautiful, does the title say it all? Love Triumphing Over Evil, which makes a great film. Okay, uh, any others, Nabil? Sound of Music. The Sound of Music. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's great, great music, great story, but above all, it asked the question is, which it was, how to solve a problem like Maria? Okay. <laughs> Okay, great. So a great music, great story, did you say? And it asks an important question, how do you solve a problem like Maria? Great. Excellent. Uh, Chris? The Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. And why is that your favourite hymn? It's him? It's Phil? It's <laughs> Okay, great. So it starts with a miscarriage of justice, but the person who suffers the miscarriage of justice ends up bringing justice for a whole load of other people. Very good. Now, that, that sounds almost biblical. Yeah, uh, Esther? Little Women. Little Women, because? Because it's about family facing tragedy, but overcoming tragedy. Okay, overcoming tragedy, love, great. Lots of versions of it as well. Yeah, now, uh, Roz, one more. Schindler's List. Schindler's List, one of my favourites too. Why is that your favourite film? A man sacrificing himself to save others, which is another biblical kind of theme, isn't it? Yeah. Have you noticed that there are lots of plots of films that come round over and over again? So there's loads of films about heroes and heroines, aren't there? Something somewhere goes wrong, someone, usually the least likely person, does something amazing, and against the odds, they rescue everybody. So loads of films about heroes. There are also slushy love stories, lots of them. There are lots of comedies as well. And there are loads of kids' films with a, a very similar message. Have you noticed this? A very similar message which says something like, if you believe in yourself enough, you can do anything you want to. If you believe in yourself enough, you could do anything you want to. And there's loads that's great about that. It encourages us to dream big, doesn't it? It gives us the confidence to have a go. It encourages us to start out towards something, even if we're not sure quite how we're going to get there. It encourages us to discover that we can do more than we ever thought we could. So there is loads that's great about that. But I wonder if there's also a flip side. Because if we don't always manage to do what we hoped to do, even though we've done our best, does that mean it's our fault? Does it mean that we failed? Does it mean that we didn't believe in ourselves enough or we didn't work hard enough or smart enough? Well, I think that the journey we're looking at at the moment with Moses, we see a slightly different message in the, the journey with Moses. So let's find out something else Moses said. Now, this next thing is hidden and it is hidden in a tin of chocolates. Now, the chocolates I have been through and I've made sure all the ones with nuts in are taken out, but it is one of those make and train tastes traces of things so if that's an issue with you please don't go near the tin of chocolates but otherwise have a look for the tin of chocolates and find the thing that's buried in it i think oh excellent great so come on out i think we found the tin bring the tin now if you all come out who've helped find it you might even be able to get something out of the tin in a minute as long as that's okay with everybody so come on bring it out and buried in there somewhere 
buried in there somewhere is a piece of paper. You might be interested in the other things in there. But, yeah, let's find the paper first. There really is a piece of paper in there. Oh, they're great. Excellent. So who would like to read from the piece of paper? Anyone else other than Joel? Anyone like to read? Joel, you're on. Oh, Linda, did you want to read? No, no, she didn't want to read. Joel, you're on. After the Lord helps you wipe out these nations and conquer their land, don't think he did it because you were such good people. Great. Now, you are all good people, so help yourself to a chocolate on your way back to your seat. I don't recommend the toffee ones unless you want to pay your dentist an awful lot of money. It's a big decision, isn't it? Which chocolate you go for? We've got Janine translating what all the coloured wrappers mean. Janine knows the wrappers. Great, excellent, brilliant, thank you. So let's move the tin out of the way. So, um, yeah. So we have these people who uh, have been given this what looks like an impossible dream to move to this new country and they've been told go for it because God is going ahead of you and preparing the way for you. But then they're told when you get there and when you've, um, when you've succeeded in this impossible sounding dream, don't make the mistake of thinking that you did it all by yourself. Don't think you got there because you were amazing. And Moses unpacked that a little bit more. He's told the people, actually, often you got stuff very wrong. Often you made life much more difficult for yourselves. But God is giving you this new country, Moses says, not because you've earned it or deserved it, because it but because it's a gift, it's a present. In other words, you won't get to this new country because you've been the most amazing people ever. And you won't get there because you've believed in yourself enough. You'll get there because this new country is a present from God. And that's because God is amazingly kind and generous. That's a bit different from that believe in yourself and you can do anything you want message, isn't it? Dream big, yes. Have the confidence to go for it, yes. Start out towards things that might look impossible, yes. But remember that if we go with God, nothing is impossible. Together with God, we can do what looks impossible as we go where God is leading us. But if it doesn't quite work out how you thought or hoped or dreamed, it's not because you don't believe in yourself enough. Maybe God is just taking us somewhere different than where we thought we might be going. Or maybe it's gonna take a bit longer than we expected. Their success wasn't gonna be because they believed in themselves enough, it was because God was unbelievably kind and generous, giving them a gift, a present, that they didn't deserve and they hadn't earned. And that's still true. So it's time to find our last hidden message. The last hidden message is hidden in a guitar case. Can anybody see a guitar case? We're running, we're running, we're running. So find the guitar case, see if you can get into it. Tricky, tricky. Tricky, tricky, but I didn't expect it to be that tricky. Are we there? Are we there? Are we there? Yeah, it's a fairly robust guitar case, don't worry. Have we found the... Are we still trying to open it? Okay, right, good. Janine will sort it out. She knows what chocolates are what, and she also knows how to get into guitar cases. I didn't think it was a tough guitar case, Joel. I thought it was quite easy. Are we there yet? Are we still not there? You could just bring it here and I'll open it. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Have you found the magic bit of paper? No? Keep looking. It's in there. Are there any little doors to open? Excellent. Brilliant. Who wants to read it out? Can anyone be persuaded other than Joel? Who would like to read it? Come on, Joel. Do you feel put upon at times? Yes. <laughs> 
Right, our volunteer, volunteer, Joel, would you like to read what we've just found? Real love isn't our love for God, but his love for us. We love because God loved us first. Excellent, thank you. Do go and take your seats. Thank you for helping us find all those bits and pieces. Real love isn't our love for God, but his love for us. We love because God loved us first. It's amazing that we can know God. And the reason we can know God is that God is amazingly generous and kind. God loved us before we loved God. God came looking for us before we went going to find God. So if we feel overwhelmed by stuff, or if we feel like we don't really deserve God's help, join the club. None of us do, but God still made the first move. God still loved even us before we loved God. And God still came to find even us before we went looking for him. Let's thank God for making the first move. do pull up a seat. 
Now, as you came in, you should have found a square of paper on your chair. If you didn't, there are some others around. So if you've not got one, do grab one. So let's see what this square of paper might become. Now, if you're joining us online, um, I said earlier that you could go to our website, tanfieldchurch.org.uk, go to Sunday services, go to the bit that says Deuteronomy chapter 9. You can download this and print it. Um, and if you're getting a DVD through the post, hopefully I'll have remembered to have put one in with your letter. So this is a square of paper. You need to hold the square of paper thus, with the um, printing away from you and towards me. Excellent. Let's see what this becomes. Now, the first bit is really easy. All you need to do is make a triangle out of it by bringing the two corners in your fingers towards each other. And your printing should still be on the outside. Printing on the outside, corner to corner. So you should have a triangle that looks like a giant sandwich, as if you've just bought it from Boots. Other sandwich suppliers are available. Great. Have we all done that? Now you need to undo everything you've just done by opening it out. So you should now have a line going top to bottom. Now turn it through 90 degrees so your line is going side to side and do exactly the same. You now need to do corner to corner and make your triangle again. So you've now got, or will have in a moment, almost like an X. If you hold it as a square, you should now have an X going both ways on your piece of paper. Excellent. Yeah, it's all looking good so far. Your printing should still be on the outside. So when you've got that unfolded again, and then hold it up with the printing away from you, making sure the printing is in the bottom half, not the top half. So you should have a line across, and then the printing underneath the line facing away from you. So turn it, turn it over like that. So, Kathy, if you turn... Yes, that's it. Brilliant. Excellent. So, have we all got our printing at the bottom? Excellent. Full marks so far. Now, take the top pointy up bit and fold it down into the middle, uh, towards you, but you're going towards the cross in the middle. So, we're, we're going... Printing should still be on the outside, but you should then have the pointy bit going right to the middle. Whoop. It's harder when you've not got a table, isn't it? It seems so much easier at home. Ruth says use a chair. Thank you. A folding chair to fold on. So now you should have... Great. So now make sure that the, the fold is towards you. The fold is towards you, but the print is away from you. So I should be able to see your print and the corner should be folded towards you. We're doing really well. This is good. Excellent. So now holding that as you've got it with the print still away from you. Now take the very bottom corner and fold it to the very top in the middle. How's it going, Mike? You always do very well with these origami things. Mike's got it so far, that's good. So you should now... So, looking good. Looking good so far. You should then have your printing along the bottom edge. Does that look about right? You've got printing along the bottom edge. Excellent. Very good. I think we're all there. It's good. Right, so... I've taken it too far. I haven't taken it far. Yeah, to there and fold. So have we all got printing along the bottom edge? Uh, yeah, don't worry if it's spilt over a little bit. This is the impreciseness of my printer. So then hold it again with the printing at the bottom. And then you're going to take... Um, so put your, your, hold the middle with your left hand. And then with your right hand, hold the bottom outside edge. And you're going to fold that up to the top. So that's going to... The, the printed edge is going to go along the upwards pointing fold that you've got. How are we doing? You then should end up with something that looks like this, with the printing there. Lots of murmuring going on. 
It's getting complicated, but it looks like you've got it right, so that's good. Yeah, excellent. Are we, are we there? Ty's asking me if it's right. If you turn it round, turn it over, so have the printing bit along the bottom edge. Printing along the bottom edge and then folding up. Okay, and then Janine will follow you. <laughs> How are we doing? Are we there? And then the next bit, all oh, Carol's jumped ahead of us, the next bit is to do exactly the same with the other side. And then mine's not quite lined up, but it was a all very well thought out plan originally. It sort of lines up, but we're not quite finished. So when you've done that, are we there? When we've done that, we then go to, so it looks almost like a, a fox's face with ears at the moment, but we're going to bend down the fox's ears just like that. Just a little bit, sort of halfway. Halfway, Mike, not all the way. Halfway, so it's, it, you're sort of taking the top off it, but it's still, still there. Yeah, and then when you've done that, you're going to fold in the side bits by about the same amount. And then you might know what we've got. A right mess, says Steve. That's what we've got. Anybody want to give us a guess what we've got that isn't a right mess? I'm hearing people saying a heart. That is what I was expecting, yes. So when you've got something that looks remotely like a heart, you might want to improvise a little bit uh, to make it look a bit more like a heart. But it's got on it, on mine it's gone a little bit wiggly. Your, uh, Chris Burroughs is looking really good. Yours is lined up well, better than mine. But who would like to read out what they've got on their heart now? Go on, Edward. We love God because God loved us first. And that's what we've been thinking a bit about this morning, haven't we? We don't deserve God to love us. We don't deserve for God to give us all lots of good things. The people following Moses didn't deserve to have this new country that God gave them. But it was all a gift because God is so generous that God loved us before we loved God, that God came looking for us before we went looking for God. So with your heart, just hold your heart with those words facing towards you. And if it doesn't look quite as much like a heart as you'd like, imagine it looking like a heart. And we're just going to take a moment as we look at those to turn our thoughts into prayer. So looking at our hearts, we love God because God loved us first. God loved us before we loved God. God came to find us before we went looking for God. So holding our hearts, let's think about our week ahead. And as we think about our week ahead, let's remember that God loved us before we loved God. And let's give our week to God. God who promises to go ahead of us. God who promises to prepare the way for us. Lord, we give you our weeks ahead and pray that we might discover this week that you have gone ahead of us and that we might see the way that you are preparing for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. But as we pray, we don't just think of ourselves, we don't just pray for ourselves. We think about people who might be on our minds and we still look at that heart and remember that just like God loved us first, God loved these people we're thinking of first too. So we pray for the people that are on our minds, remembering that God came looking for us, comes looking for them, before we go looking for God. Lord, we lift to you these people on our minds 
And we know that you know their situations better than we do. And we ask you to show your love to them and to help them in the situations they are facing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we also think about our world situation. We know that anything that seems unfair to us or upsets us will be upsetting God more because God loves us and our world before we loved God. So Lord, when we see illness or confusion or spoiled creation or tensions between countries and peoples, Lord, we lift those situations to you and ask for your love to be at work. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we finish with a song which reminds us that all of this is an amazing gift, an amazing present from God. In fact, it's amazing grace from God. Let's sing about that amazing grace together.
please just to take a seat for a couple of notices before our, <laughs> before our closing prayer. Um, so hopefully you've had the notices email. Most of you, what you need to know is in there. Or if you've not had the email, hopefully you've had a printed version of it this morning. Just a couple of things to point out. One, the kitchen over there, the community kitchen, as hopefully you'll have picked up. We're hoping to refurbish it soon and make it um, better for the things we need as a church and also for the school community as well. Uh, loads of great ideas have been coming in already. Do keep those coming as we think about the kit we need, the kit we don't need, and how to make it more accessible as well. So do. Uh, send an email with your thoughts about how we should be developing the kitchen. The other thing is not in the notices. There is going to be a Christian Aid attic sale, not next Saturday, but the Saturday after at Christchurch Higher Bevington. If you've got any items that they could sell in aid of Christian Aid, do bring them along next Sunday for Gwen. She'll um, collect them then or do put them in her porch. And if you need to know where her porch is, do let me know and I will fill you in. You may want to join in with one closing prayer, asking God to uh, continue to be with us and continue to lead us in the week ahead. Do join in if you would like to. Our God, who loved us first, please help us to grow in loving and following you as we journey through the week ahead. Amen. And as we head into this week, remembering that God loved us first, that God came looking for us before we went looking for God. May we all know the blessing of God as we love the Father, as we follow the Son in the strength and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.